So this is from Laura Bassett of Jezebel. And I mean, the title says it all. We'll dive into the article, but just soak in that title. Biden reportedly plans to appoint anti-abortion Kentucky judge to lifetime seat. Biden reportedly made a deal with Mitch McConnell to screw over pregnant people less than a week after Roe v. Wade was overturned. Stop for a moment and just appreciate how absurd this moment in time is. You have a Democratic president not only saying, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to do anything until the midterms, and also temporarily, I'm going to assist the people who are taking away your rights. And also today, he tweeted out that Ultra MAGA has always wanted to strip away uh, rights from every single woman in every single state, something of that nature. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But he's trying to, for some reason, differentiate between ultra MAGA, which is a dumb term, and just regular rank and file Republicans. But MAGA, you know, the Chuds, the uh, Cheneys of the world, they're all in lockstep. They're all celebrating the downfall of Roe v. Wade. So for him to try to draw this distinction so as to not demonize too many Republicans, it just speaks to why he's terrible. It's just awful, awful, awful president. Very ineffectual, very feckless just a coward. So let's get to this article here. Less than a week after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, President Biden is set to nominate anti-abortion Republican lawyer Chad Meredith to a lifetime federal judgeship in Kentucky, reportedly in exchange for Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell to agree to not hold up future federal nominations by the Biden White House, according to the Cour Courier Journal. I'm sorry, but you're honestly going to accept Mitch McConnell's word? He stole two Supreme Court seats from you, from your party, and you're, like, honestly going to accept his word? How can you be that stupid, that naive? Is this not the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen? I mean, imagine for a second Donald Trump as president or Ron DeSantis as president, any Republican making a deal with um, Senate majority leader or minority leader doesn't matter the circumstance chuck schumer in this hypothetical world can you imagine that deal being made on the other side of course not they just say no i'm not going to appoint any liberals any progressives and you're gonna buckle and when we tell you to jump you're gonna ask how high because you're our bitch so if we want to ram through justices we're gonna do that if we want a federal appointment to get through you're gonna do that because republicans they know how to wield power and it's funny because Democrats now, they're essentially not doing anything. Like They're sitting on their ass and they're just telling you to donate to them and vote for them. Meanwhile, do you know what the ex-RNC chair Michael Steele said about Republicans in the event they're able to secure a majority come November? One of the first things that they're going to do is get rid of the filibuster and enact a nationwide abortion ban. Meanwhile, you have Democrats like Joe Biden giving them federal lifetime appointments. This is an anti-abortion judge, but Biden's like, oh, well, just you promise, don't block my future appointments. And Mitch McConnell's like, oh, yep, absolutely. I just, what do you even say? What do you even say? I've got to um, get to some reactions here because uh, it's cathartic to see other people complain about this because I feel like I'm going fucking crazy. How can a president be that fucking stupid and naive and i think that the answer ultimately that i'm landing on is that biden isn't that stupid i mean i think that he is stupid in general but he's not just complicit like he wants to assist republicans he only recently reversed support of the hyde amendment he's had a history of making anti-abortion statements i think he genuinely is just anti-abortion and secretly he likes what the Republicans are doing. He likes that they're taking away women's right to control their own fucking bodies. That's that's what I, I see. I mean, is there any other explanation? I don't get it. So um, Biden and officials are connected or concerned, excuse me, that more radical moves would be politically polarizing ahead of November's midterm elections, undermine public trust in institutions like the Supreme Court or lack strong legal footing sources inside uh, sources outside the White House inside and outside the White House say. Okay, so in response to the nation crying out, a majority of Americans being against Roe being overturned, thousands and thousands of women marching in cities across the country, Biden says, mm, well, I don't really want to rock the boat. I don't want to do anything too bad. I don't want to, you know, undermine the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. 
Too late, dipshit. It's already undermined. They've already undermined their own legitimacy. This court is rogue. They are illegitimate. And we do not recognize their authority. So the best thing to do is rein them in as previous presidents like FDR have done. But Biden is saying, mm, sorry, I don't want to do anything too radical. What a useless fuck Joe Biden is. And as uh, this person says, in response to that, yeah, man, why would we want to polarize the public around an issue we have sh a strong public opinion advantage on rather than focus on inflation, an issue where everyone fucking hates us, right? I mean, this is an easy dub. And to not take this win, the only explanation is that Democrats don't want this win. Biden does not want to bring back Roe v. Wade. Again, he has a history of being anti-abortion, so this leads me to believe that he hasn't changed his opinion on this. Now, I've got to share this from Ellie Mastal. What we are experiencing is not leadership. It is complicity masquerading as helplessness. And that right there is the key. Bingo. That's the key. That's what we're seeing. Now, in addition to news that Biden is doing the Republican Party's bidding as they strip away women's reproductive rights... He is irked, according to the New York Times, that people keep asking him about whether or not he's going to run for president in 2024. Biden is irked by Democrats who won't take yes for an answer on 2024. Okay, it's not that we're wondering if you're going to run for president again, Joe Biden, because you've made that very clear. But everyone who's asking you this question is shocked that you're choosing to run for president again when you have been the most weakest, most ineffectual president in all of our lifetimes. Even Donald Trump was more effective than you are. And it's not because Trump is some genius political mastermind. A lot of the times, establishment Republicans like Mitch McConnell helped him push through his agenda. But Biden, the main thing that he could brag about was the child tax credit that cut childhood poverty in half. And that expired. So now what? Now what? What are you going to do, Biden? Nothing. So why are you seeking re-election? People are asking you this question because the prospect of you running again is fucking absurd. It's delusional. You're doing nothing. You're sitting on your ass in the Oval Office playing fucking chess with Jill. I just, I, I don't understand why you'd rather stay in office and lose as opposed to stepping down and allowing Democrats to have a robust primary. And it's because, as Ellie Mastal pointed out, he wants to help the Republicans. That's the only fucking explanation at this point. It might seem conspiratorial or overly cynical, but can you imagine a Republican doing the same thing? A Republican sabotaging their own agenda to the extent that Democrats do? I mean, holy shit. Biden is... One of the most useless presidents in American history. Definitely most ineffective president in my lifetime. But it's just genuinely astonishing that this is what's happening after Roe v. Wade has been overturned. It's not like this is shocking. I mean, Republicans have been broadcasting their intent to do just that for decades now. And so for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to act as if they've been ambushed and this is so shocking. First of all, this isn't shocking. You should have anticipated this as soon as the Supreme Court took up this case. But second of all, we had the la uh, the uh, the leaked draft. So you had a couple of months to plan, and their only plan was, let's fundraise off of this. It is truly despicable. So our democracy is dying. Fascism is winning in this country. And there is absolutely zero opposition. Zero opposition. Nobody there to protect us.